Well, the tide is most definitely in for UK holiday lets. It's a growing area of interest for property investors. And myself and Nick have been championing them for around 10 years now. And we've seen a real renaissance in uh, the great British seaside, interest in the coast. And to discuss that with me now, I'm very pleased to be joined by author and coastal advocate, Will Thompson. And you may know his book, Book of Tides and World of Tides. And Will, um, we've just been on one of your tide walks, which we'll talk about in a moment, but I thought you'd be a really interesting person to speak to because have you noticed this kind of reignition of interest in the coast and the great British seaside holiday? Yeah, I definitely think so, especially with my book, The Book of Tides. It's been really interesting getting feedback from lots of people who want to go to the coast more, they want to they want to spend more time, get the benefits of things like swimming, and they want to know more about what the water's doing, which is where why they're emailing me, and just getting getting the enjoyment of the pleasure of being out in the fresh air and, and the sense of space that the coast gives us. Indeed, and we've had programmes like Coast and Coast Magazine. You know, we are an island, um, and I think it's, I'm right in saying we're never more than about 73 miles from the sea, wherever we are in the UK. And, I mean, just look what's behind us. There's so many amazing things to do just in our own countries. Yeah, definitely, and especially in Britain, there are so many different environments. Mm. So within quite a short space of time, you can be in North Norfolk where you've got these amazing marshes and then you can be, um, you can go down to Cornwall where it's really rocky and you've got big waves and different, really different communities and, and ways of living there. Mm -hmm. And up, when you go up to Scotland, it's just one day's drive up, up to those Western Isles of Scotland and, and it just feels like you're in a, in a different world almost. And just think you drove there and just some of those, some of those communities and the, the bungalows you know right on the water's edge of the lock and there's so much romance there there is indeed and um i think also you know with the opening of the coast paths as well that's really encouraging people to come out and enjoy what what the uk has to offer yeah definitely and and just uh, we we're talking a little bit about the sea swimming as well and mm. getting getting out and these days i think with social media and things like that there's a lot of anxieties and things like that and actually the activities of getting out and switching your phone off and being out in the outdoors and what's really nice about the coast is it's so easy to escape everything mm -hmm. you know within just a couple of steps you're you're here or you're in the water and you're almost in a different world and you can you can really escape all the all the pressures of modern life Indeed. Well, actually, our number one tip for buying a coastal holiday let is to be within literally five minutes of a really good beach, because that is what people want when they're going on holiday, particularly for families, which is a very big demographic for UK holiday lets. And I think another thing I've noticed, Will, is that certainly in, even here in Hastings, oh, we've got a beautiful rainbow in the background. Oh, wow. I don't know if you can see <laughs> that. But... Um, Hastings is a good example of, of regeneration of coastal areas. We've got the pier, which um, had a crowdfunding campaign to bring it back from basically a derelict, burnt-out structure. And that, again, with, with the likes of the Jerwood Gallery here yeah, yeah. and, you know, the Turner Gallery in Margate, yeah. it, it's bringing people back into touch with the coast, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I was, I was in Margate yesterday, actually, and that's such a good example where... A lot of the coastal properties, are, they're quite cheap in places like Margate. Mm -hmm. So people can go there and there's so much opportunity to buy property. Mm -hmm. And then all you need is a gallery and then a couple of nice restaurants, a couple of nice shops and, mm -hmm. and some creative things going on. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of snowballs and, and it attracts more and more people and then more businesses and more things going on. Mm -hmm. So you don't need much to get these communities Get, them ro get the ball rolling with them. No, I think you're right. You mentioned something else there that I think is really important when people are deciding on a location um, for a holiday let, and that is fine dining. Um, I think in the past, you know, we've had the, 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 what I call the nostalgic British seaside holiday, which is your, your candy floss and your, your donkey rides and, and, and uh, you know, sand castles and all the things that kids love. But for the adults, I think, um, you know, standards are being raised. We've got some fantastic coastal restaurants and people like to be close to fine dining when they come on holiday yeah definitely and um, where i live in deal when i move there i've lived there since i was young but when i moved back to live there properly maybe five years ago there was one restaurant and one cafe and now 
there are so many more and what's interesting is they've all got a unique quirk so it, there's an appeal to lots of different people and even some days you might go you might go to this cafe on one day you might go to the restaurant on a different day there's so much more choice mm. and it's really attracted a lot more people there mm, no i think that's a very good point i think um you know the other interesting thing is that traditionally we used to have the obvious kind of seasonal periods where people would holiday in the UK but we've seen, seen definitely the rise of the staycation and I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that there's so many more activities to do around the coast now isn't there we you know we've seen paddle boarding we've seen coast steering um, you do your tide walks and there's so much for families to do literally year round and I think that really helps for people that are considering going into holiday lets. Yeah, definitely. And I was, I was talking to someone from Deal who owns one of the restaurants, actually, and he says he likes to go up to Ardnamurchan Peninsula in Scotland, mm -hmm. and he rents a holiday let in the winter, so in January. <laughs> and he said it's amazing because also where you got the Gulf Stream there, so it's much milder. But he just said just being, you know, escaping everything, getting in this little cabin overlooking, and the wildlife is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, for a couple of weeks in January. Yeah. And he said he absolutely loved it as a holiday. No, that's a very good example. Now, in your work, you know, I called you a coastal advocate. And that's, you, you love the coast and you want to help people to um, enjoy it and understand it. And you do a lot of educational work around that, don't you? Yeah. At the moment, most of my stuff is with, with adults. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a lot of the appeal is for sea swimmers. Mm -hmm because they're the people who want to, a lot of people want to get into sea swimming. There's a lot of popularity in terms of the health benefits and the well-being, but also you're so at the mercy of what the tides and the winds and the waves and the currents are doing. So I find that when I do my tide walks, the, the most of the people who come on them or who really want to learn the most mm -hmm. are lots of swimmers. And you've also got paddle boarders and kayakers and, and, and someone f came on one a couple of weeks ago and he, he just runs along the beach, but he's just interested in why the tide's all the way up here sometimes, why it's really far out, what, why it's really rough sometimes. So it's, it's just an interest in what's happening around you. Mm. No, well, that's why Nick and I came on the Tide Walk today, because I'd read your book. I, I found it a fascinating topic, and we just love to get out on the coast. I think, you know, whenever I come to the seaside, I just feel so much happier. Yeah, yeah, And, yeah. you know, it just raises your spirits, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. It? When I've been, sometimes I have to go up to London for meetings and things, and I, it's a tidal river, so it's kind of, I always make sure I go to the river, but when I get back to Deal and just getting out on the seafront, it's just a panorama. If you look at that horizon, it just you just take a deep breath. It just makes you feel so much better after being cramped in the in the cities and on the tubes and things like that. Yeah, it does. I think definitely that holiday lets are becoming more popular. Um, they're becoming a longer season. Um, very particularly with families where there's so many activities for children as well. Um, and you know, our advice is really to consider getting one within about maybe two hours of um, you know a big sort of uh, population conglomeration because I think all of us have that little dream of being able to leave work on a Friday night and be yeah, yeah. sitting on the beach with a cold drink a couple of hours later. Yeah absolutely where I live in Deal it's one hour 20 on the tube yes. to like not on the tube on the high-speed train yeah. so yeah you've got to leave early in the morning and you get back late but then you, you're on the beach at the, and then it's the weekend and it's so easy you just sit on the train and, and it's really relaxing. So just to, to finish off here Will, your um, website is Tidal Compass and people can go there and have a look and uh, Will does these wonderful uh, what he calls tide walks, a concept that he came up with himself where you actually go along the coast and learn about the currents and the waves and so on and uh, people can find that on the website. Yeah it's on the website and I normally put them up maybe a month to six weeks in advance mm -hmm. so it's quite nice and flexible I can choose where I do them and I also do private walks for if there's a group of swimmers or a club or something or um, I'm doing one with some it's a it's a foraging kitchen in Cornwall oh, so nice. yeah so you can specifically do it for different groups so you can keep it within your friends or your group or if you want or you just come along and get tickets with with the other all the others who come on it.
Well, that's fantastic. And I, I think it's important to mention this because holiday let owners, um, one thing that we do at our holiday lets is we let them know what there is to do in the local area. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, one of the things that if you're thinking of uh, having a holiday let out there um, is to look at the kind of things that people like Will are doing, where there are events and things going on in the local area. And you can let your guests know about them and that really enhances their holiday. Yeah, definitely. If the if they if you're going on a week holiday and then you can see, oh well, this day I can do a tide walk, yeah. and then this day we can go coasteering and then paddleboarding. You can imagine easily how you're going to pass the time, especially with your kids, and you yes. want to keep them entertained. Yes. Fantastic. Well, Will, it has been such a pleasure to be on the tide walk with you yeah, and fun. to to hear so many interesting facts and all sorts of stuff that we've always wondered about but you provided the answers in such an eloquent and interesting way so thank you very much um, for all that you do in terms of educating people about the ocean and it's been a real pleasure uh, to meet you today and we wish you every success with what you're doing. Thank you, it's lovely to meet you too. Thank you.